Dog owners, I, I want you to understand this process is when you do a board and train, your trainer is not to change the, the dog's whole personality. It's not to change the whole dog's persona of who the dog actually is. It's to help you understand. And for us, when we do two to three to four week board and trains, it's to say, yes, all the foundation is done and I'm gonna be able to show you how to do all these things. And the dog should be doing all these things for the dog trainer for sure. But when you hand that leash off to the owner, the dog's mentality is right back to where it was. When you, tr when you board and train your dog for six to eight months, that's a different story. Your, dog will, your dog's personality and behavior will change drastically. But when you board and train your dog for 13 days, 14 days, three weeks, whatever it is, your dog's behavior isn't gonna drastically change. What it does is it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, professional, I'm gonna give you this thing. You're gonna tell me a little bit more about it when I come to get it, and you're gonna give me an owner's manual of actually how to take care of it. Because us as dog trainers, when we do board and trains, to be honest, no disrespect, is we are fixing so many different problems and we're putting out fires and we're, we're fixing things that other people have done. A lot of times we do board and trains with um, dogs who adopt dogs or dogs who receive dogs back and then they throw them into the board and train program and they say, fix everything, we gotta get this dog out of here. Um, and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. But I think when you do a board and train as a pet owner, especially if you're doing a month, which is not a long time compared to the dog's life, um, you have to understand that our job is to explain to you how to do these things if you do not go home and use the tools or use the methods or use the words or use the whole thing that we suggest, your dog will 100% not work out. You will waste a lot of your money. The dog will go back to the dog trainer if you bring them back in and it'll work beautifully for them because they understand how to, how to diagnostically check the dog's behavior, how to handle the dog, how to control the dog, the dog respects them. So when you bring a dog in, your relationship is still the same as when you drop them off. However, the dog knows more things. And so if you let them get away with stuff, um, or you know, I, I blatantly tell people, hey, don't do this, and they do it anyway. Or, hey, this is what you need to do to be successful, and they don't do it. And so our jobs, like, we appreciate your business, everybody out there, um, as us professional dog trainers, but a lot of times it's not worth the headache to do board and trains because we know, and I've turned away people sometimes where I know that they're just handing me a check and they're handing me money to get a different dog when they pick up, like they're dropping their dog off to some mechanic shop and that's not how it works at all. What we do as dog trainers is we, we really help you evaluate the dog, help you understand it during pickup, and then in the follow-ups, we make sure that you understand everything on how to do, like for us, we do free follow-ups. You can, you can, your dog training for a board and train is for a lifetime. You can come back as much as you want. You could come back as much as little as you want. It doesn't matter to us. We're there training dogs seven days a week. And so you have to understand guys that when you do a board and train, or if you're thinking about doing a board and train, it's not to, to clean your hands and give the dog away and then get it back and hopefully it's a computer. That's not how it works. You have to understand that you're gonna have to do more work when you get the dog back, but your dog has a better opportunity of being successful because they more they they know more things and the dog understands leash pressure and all these different tools so it's important please 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 guys if, if you're looking to do a board and train it's a great opportunity for you to hit reset and get rid of the frustration and you know maybe if you're just going away on vacation it's kind of killing two birds with one stone but you have to understand that it's not the dog trainer's responsibility to be successful at home for you. It's your responsibility. You have to make sure that you're using the tools, you're using the, the words and the verbiage that we've used, you're being consistent, you're not just doing it once, a, once every month, once every week, uh, twice a week. We train that dog every single day three to six times a day and a dog completely is different. You're going there and you're like, wow, this dog's great. And you go home and you do it once every four days and you don't use any of the verbiage and you don't use any of the equipment that we suggested, especially for behavioral stuff. People bring me behavioral cases from all over the country, which I'm very grateful for. But a lot of times I say, because I can tell by the way that they're just trying to give the dog off and expecting a different dog when they, when they pick it up and that's not the case. You have to understand that when you're dealing with behavioral work, if you do, you hire somebody to help you with your dog and they, they do all these great things with the dog and have no issues and the dog goes home and has all these issues for all these different people, always back to you, no bad dogs. If a, dog, if a professional dog trainer can do all these things with your dog and show you everything that you need to do um, and you go home and you put in the work and it's still not right, go back, ask them like, hey, I'm not sure how to do, it's not, it's not a binary thing. It's not, okay, it's broke again, it's broke. No, 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 you're doing something wrong. 
It's you that created most of the issue in the first place. You have to make sure that you're doing your follow-ups, not just emailing and texting and messaging them on social media. Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? That stuff really, really bugs professional dog trainers because we know that the dog is capable of doing exactly what you want, but you're just not putting in the work. And so if you're thinking about doing a board and train, if you're interested in doing a board and train, understand that golden rule, that it's not our job to make your dog completely different. We are gonna help you get your dog to a better place. <clears throat> We're gonna help you be more successful, but it's your job to make sure that you follow up, you do the homework, you put in the work, to make sure that the dog is successful because that's what you paid for. You didn't pay for a new dog, you paid for somebody to tell you what you have on the end of the leash. So it's your job as a dog owner. Don't waste your time, don't waste your money if you're not willing to put in the work in the long run. It's very important. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it gave you some sort of insight. Um, if you're thinking about doing board and train or if, you're, or if you've done a board and train, you're frustrated or whatever have you, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just hit the subscription button below. I would appreciate that very much. I do all these things for free. Leave a comment uh, and ask me some questions. If you have any of them on board and trains, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace.